Hello, hello there. My name is Moira, my co-host Corey. We are The Real Guys, and this is The Real Show with two ears. Today, it's time to step into the Academy Awards and do everything, everywhere, all at once. But as always, I'm Corey, my co-host Corey. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's good to see you, Corey. It's good to hear you. It's good to see you on our video version that you can watch on YouTube. Also, Correct. you can listen to us on Amazon, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter, The Real Show FM. Uh, I just heard that the station we work for has a TikTok now, so that's all um, social media revolution. <laughs> yes. Can't believe it. Exactly. Today, we are covering two things, a bit of a half and half. Yeah. We are doing everything, everywhere, all at once. The Correct. Best Picture winner at the Oscars, mm-hmm. and we're doing the Oscars, the Academy Awards themselves. Comes around every year, Corey. Can't get yes. away from it. Nope. Like a rash. You yep. can't escape it. So, that's what we're, we're, going, to be, we're going to be doing today. I'm very we excited. Um, it's our... F- third time covering the Oscars mm-hmm. I believe I believe it's the third time it's the first time we've not done it as a solo episode <laughs> no we didn't um, well the thing is Corey I sat down and I watched everything everywhere all at once I thought you were say I sat down and watched the Oscars no no I didn't watch the Oscars I was asleep I sat down and watched everything everywhere all at once <laughs> yeah and then I thought well this is a great film this is, I'm glad this is in Oscar contention it wasn't Oscars at the time it was before because I'm a hipster I watched it before it was cool I watched it and I thought, you know what, Corey should watch this. So I sent you a message. I sent you a message. I said, Corey, watch this for the real show. We'll do it. Unfortunately, things happened the week after. We couldn't actually do the episode yep. when we wanted to do it, but we had to push it to a week late. To a week late. But now we're doing it now. This is a common theme with uh, episodes of the real show. Is it? Yeah. It's, oh, I've watched a thing. Uh, you watch it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in a menu. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. But, we, <laughs> but you ended up enjoying the menu. The menu was good. Did you end up enjoying? Everything, everywhere, all at once. I thought it was pretty good. Thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Want to elaborate on those thoughts at all? Uh, it's pretty good. See I mean, you next week, everybody. You'll we'll listen to us next <laughs> week. It's pretty good, Corey says. No, I, I thought I thought it was good with the whole like right because obviously you w- always find some point. Can I mention this? You always find some point of some point of reference with these films. Yeah, you no. see them, just like oh, I know this thing. Yeah. Oh, I've you f- you find a point of relation. Mm-hmm. What did you find a point of relation? In well, ever, the thing that everyone is going to compare this to, kind of, is similarity. Obviously, everything ever what it wants. If you don't know what it is, first off, spoilers. Second of all, spoilers. Second off, get a clue. It's yeah. Oscar Best Picture winner. What are you listen to us for? Uh, go watch it on Amazon. Yeah. Um, it's a in a bit. It's very possible. It's a multiverse film thing. Mm. Things happen in different places in like different sequences different and universes. yeah. And obviously, everyone's going to go. Well, Marvel are doing that because mm. obviously Marvel are now doing over Doctor Strange and yeah. that kind of whole Kang and mm. Loki and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, this does it quite well. Spider-Man, Not saying that Marvel Spider-Man, don't do it well. The Spider-Man, Spider-Man, yep. multiverse Spider-Man, everyone loves that. And the live-action Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying Marvel are doing well, but it's quite good because it comes out and you think, oh, okay, it's a multiverse thing. And it's an independent sci-fi, which we don't get very yes. often now. Yes. Just not affected to anything. Just to just. Uh, Independent sci-fi. It's got a got it's going great original idea of to mm-hmm. into these multiverses based on a book. So I've heard. I believe you're correct. Um, and in collaboration with the root, you we wonder why it might feel very very marvelish, Corey. Did you notice two names in the credits? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I the wasn't. Russo, the Russo brothers. I wasn't paying attention to the credits. Okay, the Russo brothers. <laughs> you might remember as doing yes. the architects of Infinity War, yeah. Civil War. Uh, yeah, Captain America: Civil yeah. War. As well as, I think the first mobile product they did was Winter Soldier, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but they ended up doing Infinity War Endgame, and yeah, that's all Russo Brothers, this entire phase of Marvel sort of. Yes. In the last few f- last few years, we've seen as all sort of Russo Brothers created, which is really a, a, a fantastic. And it's, of course, they had a band in this as well. Now, Everything Everywhere All at Once yep. is the story of the, uh, the Wang family, family of um, Asian descended Asian Americans. And which we have a lot of the the a lot of a lot of this time of year, you know. Uh, another successful film was Crazy Rich Asians. Yes. Quite a big audience for that. Correct. Audience for this as well. There's another one coming out on Disney that's got Michelle Yeoh in it as well. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name, but there's something on oh. an, a comic book adaptation, I believe. Yeah, I don't know what about. Yeah, it has some of the same cast members as, as this. Yeah. That's the coming out soon as well. But as far as everything, everywhere, all at once is is concerned. Mm-hmm. I had a very good time with this film. Yeah. And one of the things I'm going to mention, maybe later on in the review, is that okay. I feel like it's been slightly, slightly turned on recently. Okay. 
Did you get this feeling as well from like I don't want to say social media because that's like the most two toxic words imaginable. Yeah, no, right, Twitter's great. From, yeah, Twitter exactly. I'm not talking about tw- Twitter as much. I'm talking about like reviews and, mm. and I find loads of video essays coming out and I'm saying everything I've got all at once isn't as good as you think it is. Well, you see, this always happens with any film that becomes are popular. People, are people sick of of do people not like when the things they like become popular? It, is that it? It's partly that, but I think it's also when something becomes popular. Um, take anything uh, like Avatar or anything like that. Mm. When it becomes pop, everyone's going, this is great. This is this is awesome. I love this. There's always going to be people who will try and be like, ah, but like that CGI was wonky or that story has like a plot. And there'll always be people that try and go, actually, it's not that good. And then, because in, in a way, it makes them sound clever for being like, nah, it's not good because this is why it's not good. And if I was to do it myself, I would fix that and make it better. Mm. Um, and I think it's partly that it's like oh I wouldn't have done that or whatever and it's, there's always going to be people who do it with everything mm-hmm. um, it's like how if, if it's a really bad film you'll get people who absolutely love it and will tell you why it's the best film that exists mm. it's kind of like that but flipped and if you haven't noticed Corey I've had a, a paper document on my uh, yes you have on my desk. <laughs> a it document is a, it is a copy of document <laughs> it is a copy I was in Sainsbury's don't not nice. plug other yeah. supermarkets are available exactly I was in a Sainsbury's mm-hmm. and this caught my eye and I thought you know what I'll pick it up it's, it's Empire Magazine's March April sorry April 2023 issue of Empire Mag yep if you, if you know it's very um Beautifully adorned with it's very very shiny. I can see the, I, can, shiny. I can see the reflection on your face. Yeah, very shiny. <laughs> it's beautifully adorned with the Mandalorian. Correct. Pedro Pascal and who was at the Oscars was. and Katie Sackhoff, who might not have been there. But Pedro knows. Pascal, by the way, is having a fantastic year. Amazing year, amazing year for Pedro. <laughs> Shout out to you, Pedro Pascal. Not only Mandalorian. Man- Last of Us. Not only Last of Us. Uh, also, meme with Nicolas Cage. Yep. Great meme. Amazing meme. With Love Nicolas that meme. Cage. Speaking of, by the way, Nicholas Cage. He was Cage. in that film with Nicholas Cage, wasn't he? The yes. unbearable weight of massive talent. Yeah, I'm assuming that's when I mean. Yeah, of course. Um, also, speaking of Nicholas Cage, he's got a vampire film coming out. Yeah, it looks Hen- awesome. Hen- Hen- oh. Something like that. It looks Henrik, awesome. Yeah. Like um, but no, Pedro Pascal, fantastic year. Yes, fantastic year for Pedro. More success, please, to Pedro. Yes. However, if you turn to uh, turn to page twenty, you can see there's a section here: the twist and turns of the Oscar race. Mm. We won't quite get into Oscars at the minute. No. But there's a section here that says the rise of the sixty-plus female star, and this is what we're referring to Correct. here. It says that, uh, and th- uh, right up front is a picture of Michelle Yeoh. Mm. So good for you, Michelle Yeoh. Shout out to you. It says that um, the Everything Everywhere All at Once star said, uh, you know, for forty years. She's been hoping for, for for Oscar acclaim yep. like this, mm-hmm. and it's great that uh, you know Michelle, who is you know never tell her lady her age, but she's sixty years old, bless yes. her, and she looks you know looks fantastic. So good for, good for her, and she's doing as as good as she always has been. I love doing Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She had a great list, great list of uh, cinematic credits. Yep. Uh, it's true. And I'm a fan of... Uh, we've recently saw her in Shang-Chi, I believe. Yes. I'm very happy for Michelle. Uh-huh. Good job, good job, good job, Michelle. Good job, Michelle, yeah. And she brings her A-game in this as well. She does. She stars in this, and it's it's great to see her performing at her best, I think. Yeah, exactly. And some of the other stars of this, uh, Stephanie... I'm trying to remember her last... It's her Sue, is it? Her Sue, who? Stephanie who? Uh, I think. I've got a cast up right her daughter. Me. Yeah, I, it's H-S-U, so how, I don't know how you would H-S-U, pronounce that. H-S-U. Yeah, I think she does great as well. I really enjoy the, the portrayal of Joy, especially when she's in that sort of cosmic, for again, spoilers, but in that sort of cosmic form of sort of the ultimate nihilist yeah. who wants to end all reality by using the dark bagel yes. and just wipe the entire face of the universe. And it's up to her mother from each reality to... To, to, to stop her and that her husband who, who again won an, the, the actor won an Oscar for best supporting actor yes he deserves it as well really. correct uh, supporters uh, short f- won, a lot of, won a lot of Oscars yeah of course won a lot of Oscars, Oscars. yes won a lot of Oscars which who thought that flipping short round could get anywhere from <laughs> Indiana Jones <laughs> turns out he can I love the fact that it's short round I do as well um, I think it's a bad rap yeah I don't want to speak for speak for someone else but Recently, in the recent episode of Mandalorian, again, spoilers for The Mandalorian, if you've not seen the most recent episode, which I know you haven't. Like me. Yeah, like you. <laughs> um, Ahmed Best uh, returns as uh, Jedi Master Keller and Beck, hmm. uh, the sabered hand from the uh, Jedi Temple Challenge uh, 
I, I think it was a some kind of game show or something like that where it was like in canon in Star Wars a game show where kids would come on and be Jedi Padawans and like yep. go through sort of trials and tests and stuff like that like you know a brain game of uh, you know run over here and pick this up kind of thing mm. and the host of that was Ahmed Vest as this character called Kel- Jedi Master Keller and Beck who taught younglings and Padawans in the Jedi Temple and he turns up in the Mandalorian you know wielding two lightsabers fighting clones and he looks awesome and I'm really I'm so glad that Ahmed Best is with us uh, because after what happened with the Phantom Menace, he was never to work again, considered yep. suicide, all these awful things. And it kind of happened with uh, the chap that played um, Short Round as well because yes. he was quite criticised as well. And he left acting, so did Ahmed Best. He, he left acting for 20 years. Yep. And he came back and now he's won an Oscar. And Correct. He's in so many successful films. Really, it's... A career resurgence, and I'm and I'm so I'm so happy that was possible. It's been really good. Um, of course, as well, I've because you had people like Harrison Ford. Mm. Um, Hawk, they had yes. a beautiful embrace. They did. Um, uh, John Williams was there, mm-hmm. um, and it was very nice seeing him around with kind of people that he had, had starred in and yes, yes. that kind of thing. So the point where people were saying, "Just make a short round spin-off. Yeah, of course. When Indiana Jones finishes, just make a short round spin Indiana off. Jones in the Dial of Destiny, yeah. end, end credit scene, short round comes yeah. back. And it's adventures of the adventures of Tall Round. <laughs> I don't think it'll be called. He's not short anymore. Well, in, for, for his age, maybe he is. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. For an adult male, maybe he is. Who knows? How, how tall is he? Tall Round, 2025. <laughs> Well, you look that up. Yep. I will go into the different universes because the big plot of this is that uh, Mrs. Wang and her husband, who's a bit down on his luck, her father, who's played by James Hong, who's a who's a real stickler. They're trying to raise her daughter Joy and her lesbian uh, girlfriend. He's five foot four. I would okay. say he's quite short. Right. <laughs> yes. Short round two. Yeah. Short round twenty twenty five. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, still he's, short. That's yeah. the sub- that's the subtitle. Yeah. That's like the byline. Short round. He's still short. <laughs> 2020, 2025, 26. <laughs> get to work, get to work on that, WB. Yep. Go on. The, the different universes of this film is when uh, Mrs. Wang finds out that she is an interdimensional traveller. Her husband is taken over by another husband from the Alphaverse. Yes. It says there's a, there's, a, there's a force, a killer force that's taken over all these universes. You need to stop it. You're the only person that can stop it because mm-hmm. it's your daughter. Not your daughter. Yeah. It's your daughter and you've got to reconnect with her. And even when she realizes, you know, she's kind of mean in every universe. Yep. Especially when the daughter, when the daughter's leaving the laundry mat which they own, leaving it in disgust, she goes up to her and says, "You look, you're still fat. You look fat. You know, yep. eat a salad or whatever she says." Mm-hmm. And that just sends her daughter into hysterics. You know, don't I want to talk to you again? Who would when yeah. you have a mean mother? Who'd want to do that? Yeah, I mean, that is true. It was also the thing I like about, obviously, um, a lot of people in this who made it in the part of this are of the Asian mm-hmm. uh, community. Of the also Asian? Asian community. Asian community, Marie. okay. Uh, and they are, that is a thing that happens. Mm. There was a lot of, like... Um, uh, not very high standards. Very high, yeah, exactly, like appearance and stuff. You have yeah. to, you can't look scruffy. Appearance, you have to have, like, yeah. you know, uh, a clean haircut and... Even they're hiding the fact that Joy's a lesbian. Yeah. And having the joy as a girlfriend. Um, you know, who's this woman? Oh, he's your best friend. And so it's a, it's a very believable thing that, mm. like, if you're gaining a bit of weight, your parents are going to be like, hey, yeah. you need to rein it in a little bit. Mm. You need to, you know, we won't get a man. So they're, they're very, very, very overcritical. Yes. And that comes out in a couple of places, but also with the fact there are these different versions of yes. each family member, mm. and each family member has a different version. But to get the way to travel universes is you have to have the earpieces yep and then you need to do a jump action is that what they call it or they have to be do a jump point yeah you need to find something that you can do to access that yeah part of your part of your brain which is connected to the other universes yes so like you have to do a funny dance or you have to lick the wall or you have to like touch your toes what would you do well it depends on what universe i'm trying to go to yeah that's true yeah but then it also depends what versions of me is in another universe. What versions of you would be in another universe? Mrs. Yang is going, I want to have this conversation <laughs> with you in a bit. Actually. Okay. But when Mrs. Wang goes, I need to know Kung Fu, I'm going to turn into Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> what do I need to turn to Michelle Yeoh? And I, that is, Michelle Yeoh is a character in this film. Yeah. She watches one of the films. They call her Michelle Yeoh. 
It's like she she is Michelle Yeoh. I wonder if Michelle Yeoh was casting this already or, or may have had a hand in, in in part of that. Yeah, that's but true. Mrs. Wang has to turn into Michelle Yeoh at the IRS office yes. to uh, be- to learn the powers of Kung Fu As and do. take on the uh, other agents who have been sent after her. Yep. To, uh, but then we have, uh, I believe, Jamie Lee Curtis yes. plays the IRS officer woman mm-hmm. and ends up in another universe where they have hot dogs for fingers, which happens. Why not? Because I think the hot dog fingered <laughs> ape, yeah. the hot dog fingered primitive man, defeated the regular fingered yes. primitive man. Therefore, making the hot dog finger the, the, the dominant exactly. race. Yes. Because that's... A, because that one. That's, yep. And then there's the one where they're all rocks. <laughs> yep. And they can talk to each other. And uh, then there's the one where she's out, she's the sign flipper instead of the yeah. other man. Then there's one where she's Michelle Yeoh. Then there's one where... There was another weird one, wasn't there? Yeah. There is. Um... Loads of different different universes. There is. I love I love the fact that this film could have gone very serious. Like, mm. right, it was different dimensions, different things. It's oh, plot and people, you know, being mean and you should be nice. But no, it's like, yeah, I've got, got the sausage fingers. Sausage fingers? <laughs> You're a rock now. Yes. The bagel is going to yeah. destroy everything. It's like, I love that it's just gone, nah. I put all my darkness onto a bagel. I... <laughs> I just imagine all of them sat in a boardroom being like, right. What's the weirdest thing we can come up with that we can get away with? Doing? He's gonna swing these two, yeah, you know. And I just imagine some guy sat there with like I don't know why he would order it. We just order sausages and just goes. What if there were fingers? Ooh, <laughs> just put some of the ooh. What if there were fingers. <laughs> some the fingers. Ooh. Yeah. But not like sausage. Not like a not like a, a small sausage. Yeah, yeah. Like a foot long. Yeah. Frankfurter. Yeah. <laughs> a wiener, as they'd call it. A full on. Frank Furta finger. Yeah. How do you? My question was, how do they even build houses? Uh, how do they build anything? How do they pick up anything? Hmm. They've got. They're not. They're not. You can't control them. It doesn't look like. Uh, they're not no. like flexible like this. They're like no. floppy. How would you pick something up? Nope. Nope. How would you pick nope. something up if your hand is is flaccid to use that term? How would you pick something up if your hand's just going to flop? You can't. You, you you're not. You're not picking up a drill with with your elbows, Corey. <laughs> you're not trying to pick up a drill with your elbows. Got it. I I can I can use this computer. Yeah. You bet. <coughs> oh, I've just had that different. Nice. And he mashes <laughs> it with his elbow. <laughs> Pow. Then then you think about because I subscribe to that theory. I subscribe that there are an infinite what, amount of fi- universes. Oh, okay. Not sausage fingers. That an instrument amount. Of, maybe there is. That an instrument <laughs> amount of universes, and every choice you make makes a separate universe where you make the opposite choice. Mm-hmm. Like where there might be a universe where I don't know I'd arrived by train this morning. Maybe the universe where I took I got off another stop. To be a universe where the lights were turned on and we would never have met. Exactly. <laughs> there was a lights turn on. Well, exactly. You keep referencing that 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 may have happened. Yes. That may be where that may have happened. Either the, the lights turned on or I missed the bus and was late. And you was late. Or you were ill. Or I was ill. And I was ill. I or, was ill. Or I was um, never there. You know. Yeah. Or I went to Nottingham University. Well, Nottingham University, yeah. And I went to Trent College. Exactly. Instead of going where I went, instead of going, thinking, going to Lincoln, you know. Yeah. There was lo- there's loads of different paths that we could have taken. There is. Well, we've never, it, even though I think everything everywhere all at once may simplify it a bit by just saying, oh, in another universe, you have a different job, yeah. you know. Whereas you have an entirely different life, you know. Yeah. Like your, there was your a... Consciousness, your consciousness... <sighs> May exist in something else, like it's, a rock. That was the one thing that interested yeah. me. Where well, it exist in, in like a rock. Because sometimes I think, what if I was born a deer? Yeah, I think that. What if I was born like a dog? Mm-hmm. What if I was born any animal, a whale, like a, a bird, a fish, yeah. you know, something like that? Where my consciousness doesn't exist in me, doesn't exist in my body. It exists in another yeah. entity, mm-hmm. like an animal, mm-hmm. or because you, when you believe in consciousness, you believe in that everything has consciousness. Yeah. We believe that like a rock is an inanimate object. We yeah. can agree. Yes. But there is a universe where those things may not things may not be true because we don't know where like there was always a thought that matter is relative. Yes. And everything is relative where things could be entirely different. Like people this is gonna be a bit of a tangent, like wrong one at the minute. It's fine. But aliens yes. don't have to be grey men no. with two arms and two legs and a big head. No. They could be absolutely anything. Mm-hmm. 
because we because we have grown this way. We have grown this way from two through, through evolution, from two arms, two legs, a yep. head, two eyes, two ears, mm -hmm. fingers. You know that kind of thing. Yep. To, to the very specific conditions we, we exist under the very specific conditions of the planet we live on. An alien will not have those conditions. No. An alien, unless it's very, very molecularly specific yep. to how they, they grow up with water, yep. with, with you know, primates growing up from the, that, that bodily structure of a bipedal animal, aliens will not have that at all. Mm -hmm. If their gravity is different, if the, if the conditions are different, if where they are in the, where are in the galaxy is different... They will be. They will go completely different to how we look. Yep. They may not even. You may, we, may not, we may not even be able to see them. Yep. Because they might operate on a different light spectrum to us. Mm. The, where they they may be giant. They may be you know, twenty foot tall, humongous grey orbs. Yep. They may be. They might have two hundred legs and two million arms. Yep. We don't know that. They might yeah. not have anything at all. They might. They might be microscopic. We, we, we don't know. Yeah, and see, and that's why I believe that aliens exist, because if, if at some point someone's on Mars, and it's just like a weird crap, that's an alien, isn't it? It's an alien. It is an alien. It's not, it's not what you expect it to be. No, it's a weird crap. Yeah, but it's an alien. It is an alien. <laughs> it's an alien. It's probably not got consciousness. <laughs> maybe it has got consciousness. Somewhere, somewhere out there, there must be some it's other it's weird it. thing that just exists. Like a weird crap? Yeah, like a weird crap. We might never see it, but it's too far away. But it's it it be might not be able to make anything and come, you know, in a UFO and fly yeah, to exactly. us, but it'll be somewhere it'll and it will exist. And it'll be, it'll be, you know, living. Yeah. Perhaps, or in some form of life, whichever yeah. form of life this, this weird alien crab has. Yeah. Or, I think, I agree with you there. I agree with you that alien life does definitely exist. Yeah. And it is somewhere out there. Is it, is, is it advanced? Maybe it's advanced? Is it yeah. capable of travel, possibly? Yeah. But I feel like they're, they're, it's too statistically improbable for us to be completely alone exactly. in this. Yeah. Um, I was also what this is a, a separate tangent, similar to what you were saying, the whole um, do something different and there's two different you yeah. split dimensions and stuff. There was a guy I was watching, I can't remember his name, it was posted on social media and I happened to see it, who now his whole thing was rather than let's say um, I get a bus home at half five, and that cr splits something off. Or I get a bus home at half six, and that splits something off. His whole thing was, like, if you want to do, so, like, if you want to become a, a pilot, you don't make a new dimension, you just shift into one where you are a pilot. So you, right. you, you just kind of start going in that direction. Rather than making a whole new path that splits off, you just kind of shift into one that or you already are going towards okay. that instead. And that's kind of where I feel like this... Is more. I like how we're talking about split dimensions here. This is not why I thought we'd be going with this. Well, this is the, this is the <laughs> of the film, so technically we're we're not that far um, off. No, we're not. It's not. It's not. It, we've had worse tangents. This is slightly. In, this is in line with the film. I'll say this is warranted. Yeah, because also it's like it's like um, I forgot what film. There's certain films that do it where it's like here's a tree and every single like branch is it's the think, butterfly effect, isn't it? Is what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, it's the butterfly effect. It's the fact that you know we can have a butterfly can flap its wings on one side of the world, and on the other side there'll be you know rain instead of sunshine. Yeah, stuff like that. It's weird. Little little changes, like you know, I woke up this morning. What I have for breakfast? I had a croissant. <laughs> if I had a pancake for breakfast, maybe I, you know I'd, I'd be dead in a ditch somewhere. Yeah, could have got could have got a bit of food poisoning. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe you. Know? you pff, I was if if we're walking, maybe if we walk, maybe what if I tripped? Yeah. And fell over. Yeah. You know, anything could happen. Anything could happen. That's, I, I was talking to one of my friends at uh, Mason once um, a, co a couple of years ago, and he said, well, nothing's really impossible. You know, a, a vortex could open right now and a mm -hmm. giant dragon could fly out. That's completely probable. But it's just the, the fraction of it is so low that it becomes impossible, but it's not impossible. Isn't there like a really, 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 really small chance we can just spontaneously combust? There is. Yeah. And you know, if the gravity, if it, someone told me this once, I don't know who it was, but if the gravity on Earth was one, I think whatever the this. measurement is for gravity, different, yeah. we would f all, f everyone on Earth would fly at like 800 miles an hour into the wall and all yeah. be crushed. Yeah. Wait, I think it's like, I think it's happening if the Earth stops spinning. Yes. Or something with gravity. Gravity in the Earth, I think, was the topic. Yeah. But hey, everything ever all at once. Great, good film. I really yes. enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> great film. Great film. 
It starts discussions. It starts discussions <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like the one we're about to get on to, to in the minute, which yeah. is stop, stop attacking everything everywhere all at once because it's good. I don't understand this. Uh, also, fun fact, the last human to spontaneously combust was December 2010. <laughs> nice. Shout out to you, whoever that was. <laughs> uh, 75-year-old man. A uh, 76-year-old man. What, he Mi- just caught fire? Michael Fahati. Michael Fahati just caught fire. Was recorded as spontaneously com- con- spontaneous combustion by the coroner. No, by the coroner? Yep. So not by anyone who was at the scene? Nope. But it, on, I guess on his death certificate, it just says spontaneously just com- combust. Right. I don't know what. I'd, cause I I don't think it works because in my head it's it's external. You just go, but I'm assuming it's just an internal thing where you just get like too hot and your body just kind of gives up. Right. Um, but uh, 2010. Like, you think it's external? <laughs> like I'm just gonna stand here suddenly. I'm engulfed in flame. Woof. You think how that works? How that works? <laughs> that's how it works. Well, in my head, that's how it. Like it, realistically, that's I'm not how it works. Here and then suddenly, I'm just on fire. Yeah, but it, in my head. What, who, oh, it's Family Guy, I think, did that. I think it was a Family Guy joke where it happens in. Um, it? I think so. They were oh. really posh and were like, oh, yes, we're British. And I think Peter just goes, combust. He's like, oh, this is me. Oh, dear, this is me done now. And I was like, yes, goodbye. Oh, okay. I, think. Some, I can't remember. I've Fair not seen Family Guy in ages. Anyway, Oscars. Everything ever all at once. Oscars, yeah. Well, no, I was, st- I was still on the topic of <laughs> why, are people are bu- why are people saying this film's bad now? Because it's one stuff. That also, yeah, because everyone goes... On to the Oscars. Everyone, everyone all at once. Won seven Oscars. Won seven Oscars. Was nominated is, for... Was it nominated for 11? I believe so. Which is... There the, was a question about it on Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway. Nice. There was a... If you don't watch it. I, shout uh, out to you, Ant and Not Dex, every Saturday, Saturday okay. but every other Saturday. There was a question on Win the Ads. The final question was, how many Oscars did Everything Everywhere All at Once win? And I wasn't in the room. I was in the kitchen. Yeah. But even I heard it, and I said seven, seven without even seven. hearing the question, the answers. And there was seven or five. The I'm sorry, whoever this was, but you were stupid. Said five instead of seven. I was like, no, you've lost the money. Yeah, idiot. It won seven. And it won seven. I was right. I was like, I would have won that money. I would have won that money. It was nominated for eleven. Which had it won all eleven would be the I believe four film. Though, even though seven is too specific a number for yeah. them to have made up, they would have yeah. said five or ten. Yeah. You know, seven is too specific a number to have made up. Um, if it won all eleven, it would have been a fourth film to get eleven Oscars, and we were tied fourth for the most Oscars won by a film. Because uh-huh. obviously, uh, I believe Titanic got eleven, uh, Return of a King got eleven, mm. and uh, I don't think it was Silence of the Lambs, but it could have been. I think Science of the Lambs... Isn't there another film with... Uh... Ben-Hur. Ben-Hur, yeah. That's, That's it. Ben-Hur won, uh, was nominated for 12 out of 15. It won 11. Titanic was nominated for 14 out of 17. won 11. Lord of the Rings was nominated for 11. won all of the ones it was nominated for. Mm. At the Oscars ceremony, of course, there was a lot of um, great stars were there. Our friend Pedro Pascal was there. As well as hosted hosted by uh, Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel, one of the two Jimmys in the uh, yes, not Jimmy Fallon, not Jimmy Fallon, no, one of the two Jimmys in the American talk show hosting yeah. scene. His opening monologue was mainly full of Will Smith jokes, and much. then he he actually you know started to say some of the acts and da da da. Michelle Yeoh won Best Actress, great, Correct. good for her, mm-hmm. completely deserved. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I don't want to butcher his name, so you might have to say it. Uh, butcher whose name? Uh, the supporting actor winner who was in everything I all at once. I know his character was called Waymond, but supporting actor winner. Oh, um, Kehu Kwan. Kehu Kwan. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Kehu Kwan won uh, supporting actor. Good for him. Correct. Uh, James Hong had some lovely things to say. It also won for best supporting actress. I'm sorry that Stephanie Hugh didn't win it. Uh, but Correct. It was Jamie Lee Curtis, so the film won it anyway. Yeah. But I think. Honestly, I think Jamie Lee Curtis was more of a, I don't want to say minor role, but more of a kind of background role than Stephanie That's the Hughes one role thing. was. Yeah. I would like to have seen Stephanie Hughes as someone so young and someone so talented and got, you know coming up in the business to, yeah. to have won it. But, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is Jamie Lee Curtis, so I can't really go wrong with that. Uh, what else did it win, for my reference? Uh, best oh, those are the top three. And best film, obviously, top four. Yeah, best original screenplay. Okay, five. Uh, it won... Just scroll down the list. Um, where, where is it? Where? Come on, Wikipedia. Uh, best film editing. Okay. Uh, and where's the other one? Where's 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 the last one? Oh, best director. Best obviously, director. Obviously, yes. good job. 
Yeah. Best direct seven seven ding ding ding, you know. Beta Bing Beta Boom. You can't really go wrong with it. It would have won. And it would have been the fourth film to win all big five. Okay. Except it didn't. Because mm. it got best picture, got best director, got best screenplay. Uh, I believe it's best... Um, actor and actress, isn't it? Yeah. It got actress. But didn't get actor. Did not get best pesky, actor. Pesky, pesky Brendan Fraser. Correct. Stepping in and stealing it. That's a lot of fish. Yes. Best stepping in and uh, taking the, taking it from him. Correct. Taking it from Paul Michelle Yeoh. Um, it would have been the, again, I think, yeah, fourth film. That's where... Kevin Kwan could have done Best Actor. Flipping yeah. actor. See, that's that's where... Um, Not Best Supporting. It could have gone Best Actor. That's where... Uh, uh, Hannah would like to... Um, yeah, yeah. That won the Best Five. Yeah, of course. Uh, Cuckoo's Nest won Cuckoo's the top Nest, yeah, won won five. Cuckoo's Nest. And it was some film from the 30s. I remember I did that in... Um, I, li- I, li- I really like one for the Cuckoo's Nest. It's a really good movie. Yeah, amazing. Uh, so films win a bit five. It happened one night, was it one? It happened one night, of course. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so it would have, it would have been the fourth one to do it, but no, it's Brendan, Brendan Fraser stepping Brendan in. Brendan Fraser stepping in and stealing the I'm party. I'm back. My first Oscar nomination. The Mummy too. Yeah. The Mummy. Weirdly, and I guess it kind of makes sense. I didn't realize it was his first Oscar nomination. I thought at some point he probably would have been nominated for one yeah, thing, but yeah. no, it was his first one, and he well, won it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yeah. You can always do it. He's coming around. Good for Brendan Fraser. Very good for Brendan like, Fraser. Seems like, a, seems like a good guy. It was him. It was him or Oscar Butler, but I'm glad it was Brendan Fraser. Him and his sons. You ever seen his sons? You know, banter with him about on the on the red carpet. It wasn't red carpet. Oh, whatever on the on the Oscars carpet. It was champagne this said, year. Yeah, have you yeah. seen that carpet? I have. Yeah. Awful. I'm sure. <laughs> Awful. Awful. <laughs> Why have they changed it? I don't know. There was a the interviewer asked um, Brendan Fraser's sons, "Is there anything?" Awfully dad that your dad does. <laughs> and their first, dad. their first response was, well, yeah, every time we finish a sentence and we say the word right, he always shouts left at us. I think that's quite a dad thing to do. Yeah. I like, you know, Brendan Fraser again, bad rap. Yep. Bad rap. We need some more need some more stuff to do. Well again, it's, it's that's one of those situations where it was in the was in the industry and kinda got butted out of yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah. And again, it's had a really, really good resurgence and people got behind him. Mm. I've not seen The Whale. I want to watch The Whale. Mm. Um, not seen it, but it, he's a done really well. A little bit more on Stephanie Hugh. If we turn to the... Um, my what copy page? of em- My what Empire. Page? page 20. There we go. If we turn to Stephanie Hugh on page 20 Empire, it says that Stephanie Hugh missing out on BAFTA and Golden Globes nods for Everything Everywhere All at Once breakout performance has been mm-hmm. one of this award season's busiest, biggest sore points. But her supercharged performance as a neglected, bagel-obsessed Queen of Darkness has earned her Academy recognition. I really feel like any time good news happens, it's not just for me. It's for so many other people as well who don't get to be seen, the actor said of a uh, nomination. So good for you, Stephanie Hu. What yeah. else? Uh, Angela Bassett. Let's, let's, let's say how good Angela Bassett is. We sp- spoke the world of her in our, uh, in our review of Black Panther 2. But it took 30 films... But Marvel finally has an acting nominee thanks to Angela Bassett's powerhouse performance as Queen Ramonda in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. Is this nomination a stepping stone to more award recognition for Kevin Feige's superhero stable? Wasn't... Well, I guess he wasn't. I guess he wasn't Chadwick Boseman nominated. But I guess he wasn't. Perhaps. I know I know it was nominated for Best Picture. Hmm. Uh, maybe he wasn't for uh, Best Actor. Hmm. From the nine nods... For Banshees of Inner Sharon, another Correct. film reviewed and quite enjoyed. Yep. Following a first time nomination for Colin Farrell to Best International Feature Shortlister, uh, the f- f- the, sorry, Best International Feature from Shortlister, The Quiet Girl, a film featuring dialogue exclusively in Ireland's nati- native tongue. This is a huge year for the country's cinematic exports. So Correct. good for you, Ireland. Yep. Shout out to you. And um, I'm sorry that, every- that Banshees of Inner, Inner Sharon never didn't win anything. No. Which is a shame. It is a shame. We both quite liked it. The, the donkey was there. Donkey was there. Correct. Uh, we we had Colin Farrell. We had um, Brendan Gleeson yep. showing up. It's good to see good to see stuff for uh, Banshees of Inner Share in a film that we quite a film we quite enjoyed. Are we going to give a real rating to Everything Ever All at Once? Uh, yeah. Let's go I, ahead. Ooh. I'm gonna hit it with. An 8.5. I was going to... Actually, you know what? No, I'll bump it up. Nine. Okay, I'll go seven. Uh, no, I'll, I'll seven? Go, no, I was going to say seven. Best point. picture winner. Best pi- best picture winner. I was going to say 7.5. I preferred Banshees, and I think I gave that a 7.5 or an 8. Oh. Yeah. Corey. Yeah. 
Well, you're gonna have to explain all this to me. What do you mean? I just, I'm, I just, I'm, giving, I, I'm giving everything all at one to nine. I just prefer Banshees of Inner Sharon, and oh, I get. Why is that? Because it's just more my, more my film. <laughs> more your film. Well, you don't like a sci-fi and action sci-fi of multiple universes and. I like it, mm-hmm. but I also like a nice Irish country atmospheric. Irish country personal drama. Exactly. I don't like you no more, Polly. <laughs> You're boring. <laughs> Have you seen Have you seen the the eight bit game they've released? No. Look it up. Okay. Look it up now. Maybe you can play. Maybe you can uh, play what, a bit. What What, what am I googling? Tell me. Tell me specifically. I think, I think just look up Banshees of Inisherin game, and you might be able to find it. It's a game where you have to avoid your your uh, calm, and you have to avoid Porig in like a Pac Man kind of level. Have you found it? Uh, I found an article talking about it, so hopefully that can. Okay, give you the link. Okay. Those are rating for everything everywhere all at once. Uh, Corey gives it a what was what did you just say? Seven point five. Eight point five. Seven point five. Seven point five. I'm gonna give it a nine because I really enjoyed it. I the, found the, it. At, the atmosphere. The go on, go on, play it. The the the, the, the atmosphere. The the music's in my head first. Yes, the audience can hear this. Okay. Hopefully, we will get copyrighted for this. We shouldn't. Is it is it a worry? I don't know. It should be. It should be fine. Okay. Do you like the eight bit Irish <laughs> music? That's I've turned funny, it off. It? Okay. There we go. Right, yeah, you keep talking. I'm gonna do right, whatever okay. I'm doing. Oh, um, the level uh, one. All right, he's playing. Okay, so he's, he's playing it now. Okay, you enjoy that. Okay, I'll talk a bit about more about everything everywhere. Where am I? I'm I, there. I really um, enjoyed the film. It had oh, a great no, no, pace I've been caught and already. action. Oh, we've poor already <laughs> found you. Yeah. Oh no, he's talking about his donkey. Donkey, you've got to try and avoid him. He's gonna chase you though. You've got to. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta collect the fingers, Corey. I've never been good at Pac Man. Oh, what? <laughs> waka, 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 waka. What do Irish Pac Man sound like? D- I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> no, Michelle no. Michelle Yeoh is incredible in this film. Yep. Uh, as is Kehu Kwan, James Hong. Everyone's really bringing out the park. It's got a lot of existential. I had a really weird existential feeling after I finished watching it. Yeah, but you about the universe do. stuff. I know I always do. Whenever but it comes to talking about universe, you always kind of go, "Oh, this is too much." Yeah, I always go, "Oh, this is too much." <laughs> it was too much for me. I had to go to bed. I never go straight to bed after I watch a film. I was like, "I'm going to sleep. This yep. is too big for my brain." Because <laughs> get in the pub. I'm in I the pub. was like the difference worlds and the possibilities and yep. and it was very fast paced in its visuals as well it was very like bam 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 you know big lights big sets yeah uh big action and it's hard to believe that and it is shot like this that the director was once filming you know kung fu parody spoof yeah. films mm-hmm. which is incredible to see that this is our best picture winner and it is kind of that same level yeah of a almost a very high budget kung fu spoof which is fun but no, I, I I did really enjoy it. I'm running away, Connie. Mm, mm. uh, I do think it was quite good, and I do think it was deserving of not yeah, only I the win. Is, yeah, very deserving of best picture. Very deserving um, of all the awards it's won. Yeah, um, which is good to say. And also, it's very nice for just for for us especially to be able to enjoy an Oscar-winning film for once. Because often, yes. often, you know, Moonlight, whatever it was, I never saw it. Uh, all these Oscar-winning films are all very you know high class and artsy, yeah. artsy pantsy. But but this is. I think that people can, actual people, actual people, can en- can enjoy. <laughs> actual right? people. Yeah. Not sausage-fingered people. Actual people. <laughs> Not rock people. Not rock people can enjoy. Yes. But are rock people actually rock people? They're just rocks. Hmm. But they can move on their own. Yeah. They were shuffling. So grab your googly eyes, grab your washing, to go and, and you know, jump jump up and down. I lost. Do your that. Da- oh, you lost. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Got to level three, I lost. Okay. And it's a fun game, though, isn't it? It's a fun game. Why do you know this is this? Because I saw it on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah, I saw it on Twitter. I was like, you know what? Corey would like this. I played a bit of it myself, but I was horrible at it. Yeah, I'm not great. Yeah, probably because I was playing on my phone. And I'm not really good. The touchpad on my phone is basically broken. So. Yeah. For everything I all at once, we give it a nice real rating. Yep. But for the Oscars, we discussed a little bit about that. But what about Corey's weekly rec? Yeah. So, I was racking my brain at, at what to recommend, as I always do. Um, you were wrecking your brain. Yes, but I'm great. Um, I'm, I'm hilarious. And I was, I was like, okay, right, do I recommend a Michelle Yeoh film? Do I recommend an Indiana Jones film? Because uh, a short round. Do I recommend... James Hong. Yeah, do I recommend... Um, you know he was the duck in Kung Fu Panda. Oh, very nice. Did you know he was Mr. Ping in Kung Fu Panda? Did you not know that? I did not know that. Oh. Um... He was in Star Wars Rebels as well. He was as Morrigan. And like, do I recommend 
uh, a film that is in the Oscars that mm-hmm. I've seen, uh, which is four of the. Yes, well, it's, it's the most Oscar fil- <laughs> films you've seen, Corey, isn't it? Uh, in a, the most yes. Oscar nominated films you've ever seen. In a year, yes. What was the fourth one? Elvis. I've seen Elvis. Yeah, well, yeah of course we have. Actually, um, a film I haven't seen. I've seen Elvis. It's, 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 it's pretty good. Oh. Um, I don't, I don't have mind to review it. it, maybe in a bit. But I was like, okay, right. And then. Uh, I was talking to my brother recently and was like, okay, right, Brendan Fraser, mentioned before, first Oscar nomination, won, Win. won an Oscar. I was like, who else has done that? Um, and there's a list of a couple actors. Right? I'm going to uh, give out a couple actors on this list. Not, okay, not okay. Every, single, uh, every single one of them. Hit me with some names, Corey. Um, so, uh, you've got Jennifer Hudson. Ah, oh, yes. First one, won, won an Oscar. Mahashala Ali. Oh. First nomination. Won an Oscar, right? Michelle Julie Raleigh. Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. I like First Julie nomination. Andrews. Won an Oscar. Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. Big fan. First nomination. Donna Day Lewis. Yep. First nomination. Won an Oscar. However, uh, right, well, right at the beginning of this list, mm-hmm. number ten, right? Best supporting actor, right? First Oscar nomination. He won it for best supporting actor. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to recommend the film Whiplash. Whiplash. Yes. Oh, are we talking about? Give me pictures of Spider Man. Give me pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> where's my picture of Spider Man? Yes, Flash we are. Flash Spider Man. He's a menace. <laughs> Say it with me now, Mr. J.K. J. K. Simmons, Simmons. Correct. Is <laughs> he's a menace? He's a he's a menace. What are you doing on my front page? I could do all those scenes yeah. without even trying. Um, what what you are you recommending? I'm recommending Whiplash. Whiplash, which is a film okay. he won the Oscar yes, for. Yes, of course, of course. Um, I'm not just recommending. Are you J. rushing or are you, <laughs> are you rushing or are you dragging? I have exactly. seen Whiplash. Have you seen Whiplash? Yes. Oh, good. A day. while ago. We um, should review it. Good. It's a really good film. It's a really. good film. Are you going to give it a ten? It's. T- <sighs> Don't. It's it's close. We're going to have tens back pretty much. Uh, we just had a ten a few weeks ago, didn't we? What was the last ten? Willow was the last ten. Willow was the last ten that got. That, it's, it's recent. It's in within a couple yeah. of months. Whiplash is, re- it is really it, good. Even if it doesn't get a ten, we will may still review it. So you yeah. don't feel don't feel the need. Um, but no, Whiplash is great. It is amazing. Nice film. Very good film. Really, really good. I love it. Um, it's a fantastic film. Obviously, again, stars J.K. Simmons. Mm. Um, Miles Teller. Yep. And it's essentially about a kid who uh, goes to a jazz jazz school. Yeah. Is taught Schaefer, by Schaefer Schaefer Academy. I yeah. remember all the names. It's taught by J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons who is a hard nosed man. He's a very a- aggressive, aggressive teacher. But he wants those pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> Where's my pictures of Spider Man? Cash money, Spider Man. Hey, hey, hey! It's Peter Parker. Where's my pictures of Cash money, Spider Man? What's he doing on my front page? He's a menace. <laughs> If you don't realize what I'm doing, uh, listeners, I'm I'm sort of aggressively miming yeah. the m- removal and placing of a cigar in my mouth exactly. while I'm saying this. But you can't do it. You can't do J.K. Simmons' pre- J. Joe Jameson impression without doing it. Um, but no, it's a really good Spider-Man film. Spider-Man with his hand in a cookie jar. It's a really good film. Um, it's it's really I feel like good. If we ever do like a sort of cosplay episode of, of the real show. Or some kind of costume cosplay episode. episode. If we ever do Halloween, if we ever do an Halloween episode, we should do a dress up. I think I have to go as J.K. I've got to go as J.K. Simmons. I've got to go as J.K. Simmons. Yeah, as <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson, specifically as J. Jonah Jameson. Um, but no, the film's really good. It's a really good time. If you're into any kind of music, watch it. If you're into... Because um, I, I, I watched it because they were like, oh, it was... Uh, I forgot what it's on. Um, it was on some streaming service. I think it was on Netflix. It probably was. I don't know if it still is. I don't know if it is now. Um, yeah, it probably was at the time. But I used to play drums. Oh, that's a song about a guy from a guy who plays drums. Little did you know, Corey... You're in your way. Because <laughs> it's like a thriller, isn't it? It's like yeah. a, he throws the chair at him, he <laughs> slaps him around. They get into a fight at one point. Yep. You know, J.K. Simmons broke his rib when being tackled by Michael Correct. Teller. Do you remember that? Um, there's parts in the film where like he has to wrap his hands up because he's just pl- playing bleeding. it too fast. Yeah, his hands bleeding. stop bleeding. Yeah. Um, his sweat, that's, that's real sweat. Yeah. He's, the sweat is coming down his face like <laughs> as he's trying to stressly play the drums. Um, but no, it's a really good film, and it's one of the films where I've gone back and have like properly like. Well, I haven't analysed it, but I've like looked back at people um, who yeah, have yeah. Uh, who have analysed it, done video essays and stuff to the point where I think I talked about this in one of my uni projects. Mm. I was like, I love this film. The editing is fantastic. Uh, but no, it's a fantastic movie. Go watch Red Black if you want. It's a bit of a aggressive film. A very aggressive at points. Um, yeah. But it's swearing. really good. It's a lot of swearing. Yeah. From, more specifically, from J.K. From JK Simmons, Simmons. Himself, the Oscar winner. Everyone else is just kind of like... Shout out to you, J.K. Simmons. What the hell is going on? But, but and J.K. Simmons is just like... 
He's annoyed about playing drums. He does. He's annoyed about playing drums because he, he wasn't good enough. So now why, you, why, you have to be... Why did I throw that chair at your head, Nima? Yeah. He looks up. He goes, can you not got my pictures of Spider-Man? <laughs> Where's my pictures of Spider-Man? Cash money, Spider-Man. I got, what's he doing on my front page? <laughs> Oh, okay, we'll give it a 9.5 just to stop okay. you from doing oh, impressions. Just yeah. <laughs> to cut you off. Well, because I say those same four lines yeah. over and over again. Because so, it's the best lines I can do in yeah. his voice. I'm trying to think of other J.K. Simmons, uh, J.J. Jameson's quotes now. He goes, he's a thief, a criminal. I want Spider-Man. And he's, 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 remember, he says this soon. <laughs> Because there's a point in Spider-Man 2 I'm just going to mention. This is the last okay. thing I'm going to mention. There's a point in Spider-Man 2 where Spider-Man gives it up. Tobey Maguire, he gives it up. He throws the suit in the bin. JK, some old homeless guy finds it. J.K. Simmons buys it off him. And J. Jonah has it in his office. And when Spider-Man wants to be Spider-Man again, he swipes it out. And he's like, J.K. Simmons is looking lovingly at the suit. And he goes, Spider-Man was a hero. I just couldn't see it. I turned the whole city against him. I can't believe what I've done. And he turns to, to Betsy Brand and he goes, Spider-Man was a... He was, and suddenly the suit is swiped. He goes, a thief, a criminal. <laughs> he stole my suit. <laughs> There's a part like that um, in, uh, I forgot which one. And he's still J. Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons. He, he played him in the most recent Spider-Man um, film. I think it's the first Spider-Man game on the PS4. Oh, right. Uh, and he's doing like a, 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 a like Christmas commercial. And yeah. He's dressed up as Santa Claus. The Daily he's, Bugle. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. he's dressed up as Santa Claus and he's talking and like Spider-Man swings in the background and just halfway through his like Santa Claus thing he just yeah. goes on a massive rant about Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a podcast and it's great about how he hates Spider-Man. It's fantastic. Um, but no, I'll give it a 9.5. Go watch Whiplash. Amazing. Go watch Whiplash. We will probably review Whiplash soon if not in the next few weeks. I'd like to do that. I might have to, I don't, I honestly, I'd love to rewatch it so if it's somewhere. It's a really good film. It. I'm literally Googling it right now. Excellent. Um, see what it's on if it is on anything but yeah go watch it go watch Whiplash please do and also watch Everything Ever All At Once with Michelle Yeoh yes enjoy that we hope you enjoyed this Oscar Oscars winners roundup of from the real show as well as our review of Everything Everywhere All At Once go watch Whiplash go watch that have a great time watching we've had a great time watching films these past few weeks I've we have not, I've, have a great time with sort of it's the first time I've probably enjoyed Oscar season and going around and taking a look at these, some of these great films eh? who knows who knows what you can get up to when you're watching films it's a it's a magical place it is true thank you very much for uh, watching and listening to The Real Show uh, I've been Murray it's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Corey goodbye <laughs>